For the rest of the chapter, we're going to look at how we manage that exchange rate risk, what we can do to reduce the impact of the risk. We're going to split that study into two sections, internal techniques and external techniques. The external ones will be worth more marks to you in the exam, they're more complicated, but for a company, they're quite costly. So the company should consider other ways of managing risk without immediately going to those external techniques. So just a few minutes to spend on what we call internal hedging techniques. Now, hedging is action that you take to mitigate your risk, to reduce the impact of the risk. Internal means that we don't go to banks, we don't go to outside suppliers, we do the work ourselves. So what might we do that will reduce the impact of exchange rate risk on our transactions? First of all, how about instead of invoicing in dollars, we invoice in euro? Since all our business is based in euro, if we've got invoices in euro, then it doesn't matter what the exchange rate is. Now, a potential problem with that is that if we tell our customer that they should buy euro, then they're faced with the exchange rate because they're the ones that are based in the US. Their native currency is the dollar and how much it costs them to buy the euro will depend on the exchange rate at the date of the transaction. So we don't eliminate exchange rate risk from the entire transaction, we just pass it over from us as the seller to our customer. Now our customer is going to dictate whether that is acceptable or not. There are many instances where transactions take place in a third party currency. So for instance, a European company dealing with a West African customer may decide to conduct the transactions in the US dollar. That way the currency risk is shared between both the supplier and the customer. So that's one way that we deal directly with our customer or with our supplier to try to manage the exchange rate risk. It costs us nothing to do it and it may, if we do the transaction in dollar, rather than, for instance, the currency of Sierra Leone, then it would reduce our exchange rate risk and it wouldn't pass all of the exchange rate risk on to our customer. Another thing that we can do that shouldn't involve any external parties is leading or lagging. Leading is when we pay a supplier in advance. Lagging would be when we wait until after the due date of payment, pay the supplier late. Why would we do that? Why would we pay in advance? Let's think, we might look at the economic influences on exchange rates. We might say that today's exchange rate is the best that it's likely to be for the next six months. So paying a supplier would only cost us more and more if we wait for two months, three months. Now the invoice might say payment due in three months time. We might take a view that it's better to pay now. It's not guaranteed to eliminate the exchange rate risk. Sorry. It's not guaranteed to give us the best result. We might find in three months time that the foreign currency costs us less than we actually paid a while ago. Now this is not what we should be concerned about in, in exchange risk management. We're not concerned about making a profit or having more money. We're concerned about eliminating uncertainty. So if the supplier is expecting payment in three months time, and we buy the currency to pay the supplier today, there's no exchange rate risk. We know the rate that we're using. Lagging, on the other hand, is more risky. 
That is when we get to the date when we're expecting to pay the supplier. Let's say the 31st of December. And we think, well, exchange rates have been moving in our favour for the last three or four weeks. We think they'll continue to move in our favour. So we think that if we wait three or four weeks more, we'll manage to buy the currency at a lower price. Now, that is a risk. If we get it wrong, we end up paying more for the goods than we could have. So leading and lagging are to do with altering the timing of when we pay our suppliers. The lagging carries with it risk, the leading doesn't. But we might consider lagging in a more complicated environment where we're netting off receipts and payments. Netting receipts and payments is quite simple. If I have an expected receipt of 3 million euro from one of my customers and I have a payment around the same time of 2 million euro to one of my suppliers, rather than having two separate transactions, one worth three, one worth two, a total of 5 million euro of transactions, I'll net them off, three net off against the two, I'll have 1 million euro of transaction. That should seem obvious to you and it reduces, among other things, it reduces the costs for transactions and it also reduces the extent of the risk, the exposure to exchange rate risk. Now, we can couple netting off with the concept of leading and lagging. If I have a supplier who I'm due to pay on the 30th of November and I have a customer from whom I'm expecting a receipt on the 31st of December. Rather than paying 2 million euro in November and then converting 3 million euro in December, I might take it upon myself to pay that supplier one month late. So when I get my receipt of 3 million on time, I pay my 2 million to the supplier one month late and my exchange rate risk is then just attached to the 1 million euro that I receive net of both transactions. So lagging with payments makes more sense when it's coupled with netting off of receipts and payments. Here's something else that is a perfectly viable strategy for exchange rate risk management. It's doing nothing. Now, it's the easiest, of course it's the easiest, but it wouldn't just be done because we don't fancy doing anything. We would have to look at the factors that affect our business. We'd have to look at the factors that affect the exchange rate. But if we've got a lot of transactions in and out and out and in, in the same currency, if the inflation rates between us and the other country and the interest rates between us and the other country are by and large the same. And there's none of the factors that would indicate there will be sudden or large movements in the exchange rate, then it might be a perfectly good argument to say, rather than incur the costs of undertaking hedging transactions, we can avoid those costs because there's not an enormous amount of risk that they're going to eliminate. So it is a perfectly viable strategy in certain circumstances to do nothing. So there's four things. They're all the internal hedging techniques. They're the things that we decide in our office without speaking to banks, without speaking to the money markets, and they're just as valid as the more detailed techniques that we'll look at in the next session.